everybody who's all here play some jerry hey tom <clears throat> i know one jerry reed tune i played for you guys last week <laughs> my hands aren't warmed up so <laughs> how's it going tom who all else is here it's like one of those weird weird days i did a lesson with um one of my students with Terry. Actually, I gotta fix one thing because my snare drum is ringing because I was playing drums earlier. Sorry about that. Oh, hey Chad. Hey, hey, hey. Can you hear my El Capistan? You know what? I'm using a, a, a regular mug today. Um, I keep forgetting and using my um, my profane mug while I'm teaching my high school classes. And I'm pretty sure you can't really see what it says on it, but I just really don't feel like getting in trouble. <laughs> so a lot of the time I'm just using that one. Anyway, I was doing Terry's lesson, and uh, we were talking about playing in open position. He's, he was talking about how he didn't really like playing in open E. Um, and I love playing in, in E, um, partially because you have all the open stuff, and then also partially because I, I see the fretboard like that, for whatever reason. I've got all these, like all the little tricks in my box kind of line up really nicely in E. It's not just because I'm a guitar player. It's just, you know, everybody's got the key that they like to play in. So I figure we'll let a few more folks get here. But I do a lot of, um, some of the stuff that we'll talk about today is you know, playing the, like the minor pentatonic and blues scale stuff in the open position with all the open strings. Um, taking the, uh, the position above it and combining that. that kind of stuff you know you've got the kind of the albert king and bb king boxes but when you mix them with the um uh, the open position i get some kind of other cool things out of it uh are you guys is the audio okay for you guys can you hear everything all right that's one of those questions i probably should have asked a little bit earlier So, I guess the, the first thing is let's let's kind of talk about. Um, oops, I thought I had blank neck paper here. If you guys want to put any questions you have in ye old box there, and then I am going to write some stuff on here. Okay, so the first thing is is that you know there's kind of a a, a home position. 
for a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, if we're talking about E, obviously, if we're playing E minor pentatonic, all right, you're going to have all of these open strings, the zeros. All right, so that tells us we play each of those strings open. You guys are able to see this okay? All right, and then the other notes. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do this with scale degrees. All right, so we've got the root is open here. Here's the minor third. Four. It's open. Five. Minor seven. Here's the root again. Minor third. Four. There's five. Minor seven. Root. Minor three. All right. So that right there. <laughs> That's basically just your regular open position minor pentatonic scale. And that, even that just sounds cool in the open position. It'd be cooler than like, you know, it's just. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's just, I don't know, the open strings I really like a lot. Um, in addition to that, like when we talk about the chord tone soloing stuff, there are other elements that we can add to this. So we're gonna we're gonna change colors here, um, and let's let's add these in red, right? So you've got your your major third. We'll think about that guy right there. You got your six, and we'll say this is the two, All right? And in that position, one of the things that we have is this ability to play like right simple phrases like that so we've got uh, where I go five open position six root there's that minor third remember when we play a lot of this blue stuff whenever you play the minor third you give it a little tweak right right I went three and then two six and the root get to that in just a second right we also have the major third right there like if we're playing good old open E chord uh, maybe I will let's do this hopefully you can see this better right all right so we've got that's our first phrase all right I went open third string which is the minor third the major third and there's a root right there right that right there the four you remember that we're we're dealing with the notes here four hey Steve root minor third third root. A lot of my phrases like that are, are really built off of the the pentatonic scale as kind of a, a a substrate, and then I add all this other stuff to it. All right. Um, another note. We're gonna make this a different color. Just we'll we'll make it uh, make it purple. The flat five, which is our blues note. All right, so um, four flat five four three root. There's the flat five in the lower octave. Right. There's a turnaround that we end up hearing a lot of. I'll show you that one a little bit more later, but basically I'm just going down the blues scale. Root, minor third, five, flat five, four, minor third, root, and then we pop up to the root right there. You usually do like two beats of triplets in front of it. And then I'll walk back up, minor third, four, flat five, five and that's kind of the turnaround at the end so even if you're thinking like here's the five chord on e blues here's the four chord so 
that stuff make sense to you guys? I'm doing this. Uh, I'm trying to write it and refer to it, and I'm trying to cram a lot of stuff in here. So uh, this will always be available for you guys to replay, and uh, you know you'll you'll have the opportunity to kind of go back through all of this stuff uh, and slow it down. <laughs> so don't yeah. If you don't miss, if you miss something, let me know. I'll go back over it. But if you really don't have time, um, you've always got the replay. So Steve says. You go to the five next to the flat five on the G string sum. Yeah, and there's there's a couple ways of looking at that. So here's the the flat the five here. You know, part of the joy of the open position is that a lot of these notes are duplicated in open strings. So the first string, the E, we have it here on the second string on the fifth fret. Right? And long ago I, I heard uh, Jimmy Vaughn, Steve Ray Vaughn's brother, play these. All these, it's like, how does he get that sound? And what he's doing is he'll play this scale on the second string, root. All right, and we'll we'll put the um, here's the root out here that I'm talking about. Root minor seven five, but then he'll play the open first string, so it's almost like a drone string. Right, you can do the same thing where you're going up to the five that Steve was just asking about here. Right, because that five is a B, so is the second string. All right, so I've got this thing where you've got the B string open here, and then we're playing against the B string. It goes B, B flat, A, G, maybe G sharp. All right, and you get all this like really cool. In music school, they call it crunchy. <laughs> uh, it sounds where you're basically you've got the stuff that like sometimes it's uh, it's in tune we'll say or consonant and sometimes it's kind of crunchy or spicy and then it kind of resolves right and I'll use this along with like uh, like banjo roll even with the pick There's probably, um, there's a, there's a, there's a famous song that does, that, that'll be the day, I think. Um, right. But I like doing this stuff. Let me back up so you can see both hands. Where like, if I'm playing this, I've got the note moving down on the third string. If I do this, hopefully it will actually... Got a new camera, and the, and the camera's not being my friend in terms of uh, whiting things out, right? But I've got the ability... Oh, it likes if I'm up closer. Okay. I've got the ability to move down this note here, but also play against two notes that are in the E chord. The E, which is the root, and the B, which is the fifth. Right? So a lot of this open position stuff... Sounds really cool because a lot of this, especially if we're playing over an E chord, we're playing a lot of the E chord in there. You don't have to do the banjo rolls or any of that stuff, but it, it works both ways. The the one big rule is that if you play the major third, is that you approach it from a half step below, and then it'll still kind of retain the bluesy or greasiness. Right there, that's the root with the first string droned. Minor seven to five. Still with the first string going because I'm playing both with my fingers. Right there, I'm playing four, flat five, four, three as hammer and pull in the root. But then I'm also getting the first string with my ring finger. So. It's almost like an organ lick, like a, a Hammond organ idea that a guitar player, like Steve Ray Vaughan, would play. I mean, ultimately, I stole that idea. Um, his solo on Cold Shot, I believe, is the one. I'm going to pause just for a second. I feel like I've got kind of, uh, I'm kind of cramming a bunch of stuff down your throat real quickly. So if you guys got questions, please hit me up. Also, do me a favor, hit the like button if you like this, <laughs> if you're happy with what we're doing here. 
Um, all right. Other other things that you can play just in this, these first three strings. All right. We can take. Um, you've probably you know. Like uh, Red House, you know, when Hendrix plays Red House, he doesn't B flat. Whatever he plays there, All right? But the idea, he's in the key of B flat, and he's playing a B flat seven chord, All right? And the notes of this chord, it's the fifth, the minor seven, and the major third. If we take this down here. Some of you guys might recognize this as just being the good old open D7 chord. Like we've got open D major, open you know, D minor. That's the D7 chord, right? But that shape, those three notes, we can move it up two frets and it's E7. You play that shape up here, play the sixth string, then you got E. Alright, so I've got a couple things we can play with there. One of them, the first one, is that without playing the note on the first string, we'll leave the first string open. But I'll play those three strings, but with there is the B, which is the fifth, there is the D, which is the minor seven, and then the first string. All right, so you don't have to have that banjo roll thing, but sliding into that gives it a nice smear. So even if you're not doing the, the hybrid picking thing, you've got that kind of sound. All right, you could do it just. these things that you can play with in, in this position that's one of the first ones whether it's the hybrid banjo roll thing all right a couple weeks ago we talked about this it's almost like a almost like a, a an organ or a piano riff that you would play all right so this is on the just on the second and third strings and I'll show why we do this in a second you've got the fifth and the, and the major third pick it however you want and then you can bar on the second fret on those two strings, which is like the four and the six, if you want to look at it that way. And then we've got our two notes from what we were just doing, which is the fifth and the minor seven. Right. So that makes a really cool... Um, As a rhythm thing but also like if I'm playing solos right I'll use those ideas as part of my lead line or my solo line so it's not just a, a, a rhythm guitar thing it's also a solo thing all right so I've got that you can move it down chromatically or you could do it with a You know, with the uh, kind of the piano lick kind of deal there. I also, you could take it one of the more standard ways just to play the whole D7 chord. All right, so you got that idea. You're just moving down and then resolving into the E chord. You could go, which is very much the um, killing floor idea. And it's really an extension of the piano lick, the thing I was just calling a piano lick a second ago. All right, so you got the D chord, or the E7 chord. All right, and then you can bar on the second string, or on the second fret on the first three strings, and then you got the E. And I'm gonna tune for a second because you guys deserve me to be in tune. You guys have any questions? I kind of figured today I would just, I would cram as much stuff into this video as possible, uh, answer whatever questions you guys want answered, but then um, 
keep in mind that these are always left up for you guys to watch later. Um, so instead of me spending 30 minutes on one or two licks, uh, you can always kind of go back and, and pick these things up uh, at your leisure. So we'll try this. So if you guys like that approach, let me know. Um, but that's one reason why I'm trying to cram all the way through a lot of this stuff all, <laughs> all at the same time. So, okay. So, oh, hey, this is from last week. I got to remember to take these things off. Okay, so as far as these guys go, all right, we've done um, some of the banjo licky ideas. We've done the three note keyboard lick idea. We've done it on two strings. We've done the drone string. We've also done using the open strings as drone strings as you're playing just the minor pentatonic or blues licks, right? So with this, right, I've got this scale. And if we look at this right here, all right, for, um, hang on a second, root seven, sliding down into four, there's the minor third root, minor seven root. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So let me, I'm going to, um, I'm going to pick a different backing track. I'm just going to play some stuff over this one using some of the things we got here. some of the things that I was doing there kind of extended past our little open position, but I still used open position ideas. All right, let's go, uh, let's go green for a second. So five minor three. All right, that right there. And I'll put a, a root. So we're keeping track of the roots here. I'll put this one in red. We also have, there's a four. Still kind of in the same ballpark as what we were doing before. Um, and the neat thing about that is that I've got this batch of, of thirds here, right? So say we take this and um, I'm going to go five minor seven. Is a different color, and then we've got here's the four and the six. Oops, and then here we got five minor three. All right, and this is like even like uh, <laughs> like the Blues Brothers. Right, 
So that that lick right there, they're all chord tones, and they're they're in thirds, all right. And I can use that. Right. I, I love that because I've got the ability. Right, to, to actually make all of this stuff kind of thick sounding. Yeah. And it's all in E like that. Th those those notes right there, same as those guys right there, but I'll, um, oops, I'm kind of six and then put a little extension here. All right, and then obviously, you know, you've got um, root and five here because the, you know, the the twelfth fret, that's the same as the open position root. So anything you play down here, you can play up there too. So, you know, even if you're not really comfortable moving around the fretboard, if you got an idea here, you just repeat it up twelve frets and you're, and you're pretty good. Most of you guys, I think. Are aware of that but we kind of forget oops man the, the lighting is you know it's, it's it's nice because you've got the option to develop a phrase just by simply moving it up but it helps to know that like when you're playing this idea when you play it out of the open position you have to know how to finger it and vice versa okay let's open it up you guys have any questions i also had the rhythm guitar lesson this week um which was was kind of fun talking about playing with drum loops and things like that so if you guys have any questions about that um or anything i'm good with that so i'll kind of wait a minute <laughs> go back into the open position here for a second all right so are you guys familiar with freddie king you know freddie king's got all these like hideaway all right and, and what's cool about hideaway and even like steve ray vaughn doing buddy guys mary had a little lamb is that they're chock full of these great open position licks and I love stealing these things and then kind of moving them into other stuff, right? So, um, right, we'll start with that one from Hideaway, which if we look at this right here, what I'm essentially playing is five, hammer on to six, root, and the major third right there. And uh, just put that guy right there. All that stuff you don't really need, but the idea, right? I love that, and I'll take it, I'll move it to this position five, six, root three, right? And, and that lick, learning that lick originally was one of the things that started opening up this position of the fretboard. Was like, hey, I like this. Right, where else can I play it? And one of them is just let's go down an octave. All right, and then suddenly, all right, we've got the ability to kind of combine it with some of those other things too. And that's what I kind of want you guys to start seeing is that as you learn an idea, if you learn what these notes are relative to the root and you start recognizing where they repeat over the fretboard, it becomes a lot easier to flow through these ideas because you, you have an understanding of what they are. It's not just a bunch of, I put my finger here and here and here in this pattern on the fretboard. It's like, I literally know that this is a major pentatonic scale. I know to repeat it. Right, so that idea, that's kind of what we started with there with the minor third. Two. All right, and, and to me, that's like one of the greatest things is, is being able to play an E down there. We get used to all that stuff up there, but 
films. I guess especially on a Telecaster. With the Telecaster, you know, kind of, I, I keep getting into that Don Rich Buck Owens kind of sound, but but I like it. <laughs> Any questions so far? So that's the first one, right? That's basically based off of um, Hideaway. And he'll take that, makes little melodies like that. You should be able to pick that up. This part is, is harder which we won't get into, but I want you to see that, like if you can figure out the melody there for Hideaway using just those notes, then you've got the vocabulary in this part of the fretboard. And honestly, you know, so this is my, every week I do the same, <laughs> I push the same agenda here, but it really is. If you know these things all over the fretboard, um, you know, you've got way more use out of them and, and you're able to actually say a lot more with other ideas too. What was that? Um, <coughs> um, Maggie May. By, uh... <coughs> Sorry, I'm kind of dying here. Um, uh, Rod Stewart. He's got that solo. <laughs> exactly goes but that whatever that is right there that's kind of like the hideaway idea right um, so if I wanted to um, up into the five um, how my thing is summon E That, that gives me a little bit of a different approach to that same little bit of real estate and that's not even a blues tune all right so if we got this here let's see if we can use the the rod stewart <laughs> I took the bit I stole from the Rod Stewart solo. I took the bit I stole out of the Freddie King Hideaway melody. And then I played the, the turnaround. Right. And that is actually really kind of a Muddy Waters kind of deal. All right. You know, and then we're kind of going back to this idea. Hey, I've got this vocabulary of this pile of licks. And they're not just things that I have to play by rote in one position. Um, they're things that I can actually break down. And uh, through the, the process of breaking these things down, I'm able to uh, re repurpose them, I guess, and use them in other places. All right. Say, um, let's get rid of those backing tracks. Let's find something completely different. Um, I've got some weird ones. Um, here's smooth R&B and C sharp minor. Rod Stewart over this. So, 
You know, in in that context, I'm playing something that's um, not blues at all. I mean, it's not Rod Stewart, <laughs> right? But I took this these little melodic fragments and I, I repurposed them, put them someplace else. Let's get something much different. Uh, especially something that's not going to get me in trouble with copyrights. I'm trying to find. I've got a. Um, it's E minor. That's what I was just playing. Sunshine Groove. And with the key of D. All right. So there's the Rod Stewart, it probably should work. There's the, um, what do you call it, Pretty King? Take a pause. I am open for questions. You guys have anything, uh, anything? <laughs> I'm sitting here kind of meandering a, a bit. It's kind of, I mean, I'm having fun just playing, but I want to make sure that you guys are getting something out of this. Hey, I could play a, a Eric Johnson lick over this. Here's here's the atrociousness. I'll, I'll, I'll mix all these guys and Eric Johnson. other stuff cool okay um so Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff I had some Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff so he does um Mary Had a Little Lamb that's it All right but there's one lick where he goes um um let's see And even though that's really over the A chord, right, it, it's really kind of in this E sound, and I like this. So this one, five, six, root, minor third, I mean, there's that blues, so four, flat, five, four, minor third, five, six, root. Kind of extends all of these sounds here. So let's go back to one of these E ones here. I think it was the first one I was playing over. Man, it's got a long lead into it. When I get to the A, I'll add that one in. Mm -hmm. 
I had, a, I had some, uh, like a granola bar before we did this, and I'm kind of dying. Are you guys seeing any of the stuff that um, I'm connecting in there? I really like um, this. Um, right, it's kind of like the whole Steve Ray Vaughn thing is is a big part of what we're talking about today. All right, I've got that whole root. Uh, let me give you the the thing again. All right, so I've got five, six root, and there's the minor third. Going down the blues scale, three root, seven, five. All right, and then I've got this part where it just slides up. Uh, this is the five and the minor seven. I just broke the, <laughs> the top to my toggle switch. All right, I'll find that later. Oh, there it is. Sorry, guys. I haven't been gigging, so I haven't been breaking stuff. So this was kind of a weird thing. Uh, one of my fake pedal steel licks I like doing in this position. All right. I like this idea. I've got the the root on the first string open there's the six and i'll take the flat five bend it up a half step and then i'm you know uh hybrid picking and you can even like release the bend as you're doing the the, the picking So there's, it's almost like a six chord. Um, you guys know Little Sister by Elvis? There's another open position one. But little sister, don't you? Little sister, don't you? Right, and that's just the going down the blues scale. Three, root, seven, five, minor, or flat five. Four. All right. All right. But then when he gets to the four chord, he plays this lick. I guess it's Scotty Moore that does this. And it's very similar to what I was just playing. And I love it because it's got this kind of like weird, crunchy sound to it. All right, so I've got the open first string. I've got the minor seven right here on the second string. But I'm taking my first finger. It's on the A, which is the four. And I'm hammering onto the... B, which is the five. Right, so when he gets to that part, little sister, don't you? Little sister, don't you? Little sister, don't you kiss me once or twice? Do it very nice and then you go. Right, so. There's the blue scale, four, flat, five, pull off there. I love that sound too, and that's... Okay. Pause time. Questions? I'm basically just dumping all the stuff I like doing in the open position <laughs> on the ground for you guys. Um, you know, you can always play uh, the major chord, like I'm playing an E major. All right, and then while keeping the root on the first string, play it as a diminished triad. That's a cool sound. And what's happening there is that you've got just got the root five and three. And you move these two notes down a fret, 
while keeping the note on the first string the same. <laughs> All right, and that gives you kind of a cool, you can do it as an intro, you can do it as part of a solo. Um, Another Steve Ray Vaughanism where you take what would be like our E7 if we did up here an octave. And I, I've done this a couple times over the course of this live stream where you break it down a half step and you just smear the whole thing up. Uh, a lot of times, um, say, let's see where we're with this back track. When it comes around the second time I'll play the first four bars and I'm going to put that in there and see where it is. So it's cool because you can take that E7, if you move it down one fret, it actually becomes part of a diminished chord, and then back. As long as you bring it back, it's not a wrong chord, it just moved down chromatically. But on that fourth bar of the 12 bar blues, if you take it and you just kind of bend the whole thing up, I stole that from some, it's amazing how much I've stolen from Steve Ray Vaughan. I don't even really think about it that much, but. But this. You do that as an intro, you could do it as part of the beginning of a solo. If you're trying to really bring up the, uh, um, uh, the octane a little bit, All right? And that's just the major triad diminished which looks just like a uh, like a c7 right there and then back to the e and then you just come up here and you've got that guy there too any place where you can smear notes it's cool i think it's cool so there's a um one of my favorite uses of that um diminished chord is um um Robert Johnson um it's come out in my kitchen I don't remember but he's playing an A and he's just playing the the bass note there all right and what's happening there He's got those three notes, and he's able to kind of play some open stuff in there. That kind of gives us our crunchiness. Hey, Bruce. Um, you can also do it here, A. Eh? All right, and then back there. And that gives us the ability to kind of make a new sound without changing the chord. So, Steve says, triads again. Um... You know what you'll find, Steve, is that everything that I play can, or everything I teach or play can kind of be related to triads, because it's all about chord tones, right? Triads, a lot of times when we talk about triads in guitar lessons, we're just talking about chord shapes. Um, but in reality, we're just talking about chord tones. And sometimes you use them all together, and sometimes you use them one note at a time, and sometimes you, you'll use, um, like, this chord here. Oops, let's get rid of this for a second. Sorry, Steve. Um, right, this chord here, you know, if you're a child of the 70s TV, um, you know what you just won? A brand new car! A case of turtle wax. One year supply rice roni, the San Francisco tree. Right, that's the Price is Right chord. And basically, the way I'm doing it here, it's an A triad with a B in the bass. All right, so a lot of times I'll talk about triads as they relate to over chords. With that B, if I wanted to, I could play a, a D flat, and this is actually C sharp, and then this is actually a D flat seven chord, it's inverted, all right? Um, I could do, um, that's another good example. If I played a, an F sharp triad up here with the B, that actually kind of becomes B uh, major seven. Actually got a nine in there too. Right. Um, 
but the triad thing, you know, it, it's just, it's funny because the way I teach it, sometimes people think that it's just this one little bit of information. And in reality, um, you know, it, it's any place where you've got a three note chord that fits, you know, major, minor, you know, functional harmony. All right. And sometimes we use it as like, hey, this B chord is a B triad. And sometimes I'll actually say, hey, you know what, over this B chord, I'm going to play an F sharp triad, right? Because that actually gives me these other notes I can solo over this. Or here's, there's B triad with a four. Same idea here is off the five chord, right? But that gives me a different sound over the B, right? Um, or, you know, I can, I can go through a scale in triads. Yeah, right. and I'm using those triads as another way of building a, an interesting or weird line. So, yeah, everything's a triad with me, I guess. That's <laughs> so. Okay, coffee time. So, I might wrap this up at six thirty today. If you guys have questions, please get them in now. Don't worry about what our topic is. I'm I'm here to answer your questions. If you guys have other questions, um, and then. Uh, if, if we're wrapping up in five minutes, I'm going to go have some meatloaf. <laughs> so. This week's lesson, um, I'll put a, a link to this week's, let me put this down for a second. Um, this week's lesson was kind of a continuation of the rhythm guitar stuff that I've been teaching. Um, oops, I had a whole series of these lessons and um, I was kind of doing them because um, I needed to have this curriculum for my conservatory classes, but I also thought it's nice to have a um, uh, basically just a program for people to kind of work their way through. All right, so I'll put this here in the chat, and I'll even put it in the uh, the comments of the of the oops of this video here. And this one, um, it's a continuation. Okay, oh, I can't leave regular comments while we're in the live stream. Okay, that's fine. Um, but the whole lesson series is basically about building, getting you to internalize your time, your internal clock, and, uh, and getting you to subdivide. But this last one, uh, half of it is talking about syncopated rhythms where you're keeping your arm moving. And the other half is like, hey, let's listen to the drummer and see how we have to fit in with the drum part. And as well as the PDF that's in there, because almost all these lessons have a printable PDF. Um, this one's actually a zip file, and it's got three drum loops for you to play over that I use in the video. Um, and that's there so that you can actually start programming your hands and, and start thinking vertically without worrying about learning somebody else's song. So you'll have the... Um, actually... Hey, let's do this. I can do this because it's my video. Um, whoops. Just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So it's this lesson here. And I'll just kind of uh, shoot you through here real quick. Um, so metronome for this is going to be seven beats can hear this. per minute. Um, I talk about working so with the metronome, metronome as always. Really playing this drum, right. they tend to kind We've got of got our rhythms here. Zone out on that. But then we get into a little proper. bit later on, and we talk so about the rhythm that you're playing over for this one. one How to find where that time is. And how to lock in with that drum loop. I've got a couple of these on here. Oops. In rhythm, it lines up with the drum beat with the kick. This was a little more rock and roll. And then when you're playing this part, it's actually going to work pretty good. All right. But like I was saying, those uh, that lesson actually comes with a download with the loops for you to practice over. They're MP3s. It's not like you have to go to a video or anything like that. Um, and it's part, part of it is like I, I uploaded a bunch of videos, um, 
and they're literally just drum beats. And, and part of it is I realized that yet some of my students just need to be able to practice with something that's just a straight drum beat. A lot of times, if you if you find drum loops places, they're they're full of all kinds of fancy stuff. Um, these are as simple and as meathead as I can make them because I want them to be easier for you to latch on to and play, you know, in the pocket with. All right. So that's that's kind of what that lesson's about, and that's the last of those kinds of rhythm guitar lessons I'll probably do for a little while. Um, and then um, I may not have any new lesson lessons this week. I haven't thought about it yet. Um, but I'm going to actually change gears. And so, like I've been doing the last couple live streams, uh, any kind of input you guys have into the kinds of lessons that you're interested in, I'm down with it. I've actually kind of run through the stuff that I needed to cover to have like the good basic um, Mark's Foundations for Guitar book online practical stuff. Um, I might do some, you know, uh, here's some cool licks and here's how I use them kind of stuff. Um, the backing tracks are really popular, so I'm, I'm trying to kind of crank at least one of those out a week. Um, but I'm, I'm always taking input, so if there's stuff that you guys um, are interested in, please, please let me know. Uh, so let's see, comments, Steve. Yeah, these, I mean, what, what you find with these kinds of lessons, uh, and for me, I, I still, like when I record stuff, like if I do backing tracks or if I'm working on music here at home, and I have to play with the with the drum set, um, you start realizing exactly how accurate or inaccurate you really are. It's the recording thing that, you know, and I have to work on the same stuff. I'll use... Um, I've got the shaker. One of my students turned me on to this. He was taking guitar lessons at his church, and the guy teaching the lessons at the church had all of them play a shaker. All right, and he said, "Okay, so you know, here's here's your quarter note, and if you could actually keep this consistent, so I'll show you what he did. And this is pretty cool, actually. Um, so here's sixty beats a minute." All right, and the thing with the shaker is that, um, you know, it, it's not a, a, a solid thing, right? It's got sand in it, right? So one and two. All so trying to get it so that the sand actually sounds like your rhythm guitar playing should. That's a hard thing. And you're just working on that motion. One. So one. So I'm doing very poorly at this tonight, um, but uh, you know, to me, it, it's funny. Like if, if I warm up trying to get this to sound good, and this is just like a, a like a little egg shaker kind of deal, and it's perfect because it fits in the hand. Um, and it's just like holding a pick. Money in two. All right, but if you can actually get that shaker to sound right, like in the pocket with a drum beat, now I'm sounding, you know. Um, then when you pick up the guitar and you play with it, you know, you, you've kind of worked on that motion without really worrying about the mechanics of playing the guitar. All right, so then, you know. All right, so that's what I was like. I'm gonna try and incorporate this in some lessons, right? And, and And kind of see how that goes so th there might be some a little bit of rhythm guitar stuff like that but that's one of those things that I do because I always feel like my my basic strumming and rhythm guitar skills suck I'm always a little frustrated with that sort of thing um, I'll, I'll probably be pulling apart other people's licks for a while I think that'll be kind of fun um, just like you know we were doing here today um, and showing you how you can repurpose them or kind of use them. because a lot of what I really want to teach you guys when it comes to the improvisation is this idea that um, what we're learning should be uh, things that break down to the point where they just kind of become part of your personal sound. Right? Um, when I play, right, it, it, I don't necessarily think that you can hear and say, this guy only listens to Steve Ray Vaughan or this guy only listens to whatever. But you do hear elements of all that stuff in my playing because I've learned it and I've kind of gestated and broken it down and it just kind of become part of my DNA when I play. Right, so a lot of those licks, all right, that, that's just part of part of my melodic vocabulary. 
And I think when you listen to other players like that, that's that's a big part of like anybody that's got a, a, a sound, they've spent a lot of time learning other people's stuff and then kind of saying, hey, how can I fit that into what I like to do? Uh, and that's that's a little bit of the approach I've been taking with this stuff. So, so that is it. Um, one last appeal for questions. I'm up for any questions. I'm back on the Telecaster kick. I'm really, I really enjoy this guitar. Although yesterday I was playing my uh, my Karina McFeely, and I forget how good that guitar sounds too. So. <laughs> Just for this kind of music, this was actually this Telecaster has a lot more oomph to it than a lot of my other guitars, believe it or not. So, all right, folks, I think it's meatloaf time. Um, I will see you later. Please, I'll uh, I'll post in the video description below this uh, links to some of the uh, the lesson series that I've I've got because. Uh, um, I've got them kind of set up where you can kind of go in order, whether it's the cage uh, fretboard stuff, it's the basic rhythm guitar stuff, it's the very beginning guitar lesson stuff, like here's a D chord. Um, I've got them basically so you can start in the playlist in one place and just kind of work your way through um, over time. And uh, any of that stuff, like I said, please, if you ask questions, I will answer them uh, in, a, in a live webcast or I can answer them on the video. Um, if you haven't subscribed and want to uh, know when we're doing this stuff, which right now is every Wednesday night and Saturday morning, subscribe and hit the notification bell thingy so that you actually get a notification when I'm going live. Um, and then please hit like on the video because that also helps. <laughs> or share it with your friends. Yeah, we're building a new channel here, so anything you guys can, uh, can do to help, I really do appreciate. So, right. thanks a lot, and I'll see you all on Wednesday.